thanks so much. Thank you, Coach Baldwin and the coaching staff here for coming in for inviting me here to share with you guys uh, in your open chapel, right? The first home game last week we were there with you guys in Kona-Wani. You guys did a phenomenal job. It's an incredible uh, just focusing and working together as a team. What a great day it was for my family and I to go out there and watch all you guys. Today I'm just going to spend around 20 minutes just, just helping you guys develop three, three key things. We're going to talk about some character things. We're going to talk about some spiritual things. That's why it's called a chapel. But before we start, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. Ask the coolest blessing on this time. And then I'm going to share with you those things. Okay, so let's bow our heads a little bit prayer. Well, we come before you and we thank you so much. We thank you for every single one of these young men in here. They are warriors, or they are your warriors. Or they were born here and placed here for this specific time, or in history, here at this school, at this very hour. And so, God, I pray that you would anoint every single one of them now. You know exactly what they're going through in their life. You know what they've been through. You know their complete history. And you know their destiny, God. Your destiny for their life. And so, God, I pray, Lord, beyond all the things that's going on today, I pray that you, the great God, would reveal yourself in a supernatural way to every single one of you. And you would show them your mana, your peace, and your aloha. We thank you so much again, Lord, for these young men. We pray, Lord, that they would do great and mighty things and bring you honor. And we pray all of this in your son's name, yes, you. Amen. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about three different warriors. That's your name. You guys are warriors. I've seen you guys the last couple of weeks at Long Stadium, even last week. My first time ever seeing you guys do the haka. You guys were doing cultural things. You guys were doing the protocol, saying, Akua, come meet us in this place. And how do the people respond? Well, when I was at Long Stadium after you guys did that, it felt like electricity. It wasn't just the scoreboard. It was this mana that was rising in people because you guys were there together as a team. A lot of these captains, I, I videotaped it, I recognize who you guys are. You guys are right in the front, representing your team. And you guys were drawing that funnel from everybody else around there. Dan, you guys were jumping around, acting, acting crazy, celebrating all the great victory. Akua blessed you with that. He blessed you with the physical, intellectual strength that you guys have. You guys were here, this is a chosen school. That's why everywhere I go over here, there's the symbol of the cross, my princess, and our king. And all of these things remind us of why you guys are here in this place at this very time. It's not just because. It was just because you guys would be going to some different school. You guys were chosen. Every single one of you were hand chosen to be in this school at this very time. I'm going to talk to you about three warriors. The first warrior was a cultural warrior. We are Hawaiian. Okay? And there was a warrior that was here. He, he helped the uh, great king Kamehameha. And his name, and this is going to kind of be cool and it all ties in, but his name is Ho'olulu. And he was one of the greatest advisors to King Kamehameha. Does anybody know what Ho'olulu uh, Ho stands for or is significant in Hilo? You guys know what that place is? Uh, Ho'olulu is what we call the Ho'olulu Park, is where Wong Stadium, the tennis stadium, the swimming stadium, and the, uh, the Chin and Auditorium. Where all, it's the athletic complex that we have here in Hilo. was named after that great warrior. What makes him great, because he was an advisor to King Kamehameha, what made him great was that he could be trusted, the king could trust him. And that's the value that you have to have as teammates, as people who are going to work together to be victorious. You guys are going to have to have trust. What happens when you don't trust your friends? Stop, right? What happens when you don't trust your girlfriend? That's love. That is even tougher, right? So trust is a very important thing to the king. And so here, when he dies, when King Kamehameha the Great dies, his, his uh, body is given to Ho'olulu and their family. They are the guardians of his body. They don't know where they bury him, but they bury him. Only his family knows where that body is at. Because in the bones carry the mana, carry the anointing. Okay? And so we know that wherever he was, only whole Blue's family knew where he was. And they protected and kept that secret. That's what a trusted advisor does. That's what a warrior is. A warrior can be trusted at all times. Okay? The second is a spiritual warrior. And that's what that's the, the most important thing. If you look at, even as I study all of these things and I go on to 
online and study all of our, our rich Hawaiian history, we realize that, that this, this whole thing about being a spiritual warrior is significant. The reason why is the greatest king of all kings was Jesus. The Hawaiians call him Yesu Cristo, whether you put your faith in him or not, that's a different story. But I'm speaking for the Hawaiians because I'm Hawaiian. And I'm telling you, the King Kamehameha, the great king, right? He gave his allegiance to the king of all kings. He realized there was a king greater than he. And in 1843, he made the declaration, which is our state model. Most of you don't know this because we see it on, I was coming down the street by Bayfront yesterday and we see the state model on our, on our trucks and all of these different things on shirts, on, on stickers. But what it really means is it was, it was a declaration over the Hawaiian people and this is how it ended. It ended and it said, in the name of Jesus Christ. Today that's not the most popular thing. But you guys, our king on July 31st, 1843, said that prophetic word over our generations. And he said, you will become Fono. You will, it will come out of you. What's right will come out of you for generation to generation. You are Hawaiian. Okay, he said that. Do your research. You're going you're to find it today. It's much easier to find that kind of information. But study the archives. Because if you guys don't know what your roots are, you guys are going to begin to live somebody else's culture, somebody else's mindset. What made Jesus the most significant warrior is this, was his humility. Okay? Humility, another word for, word for humility is being meek. We don't use that in everyday language. We see somebody who's humble and we don't go, hey, brother, you're really meek. We don't use that in everyday language, but this is what the word meek means. In the Greek, when it talked about Jesus, it said the Greek word was parous, and parous meant power, all power, he had absolute power, it was under control, it was in its proper place. So when people were around him, even though he was all power, they didn't feel like, they didn't feel inferior to him. He was common, just like everybody else, he talked like everybody else, ate like everybody else. When they tried to look for him, to kill him, they couldn't tell who he was. Why? Because he wasn't some guy walking out with his chest out going, yeah, I'm Jesus, you know. He was just like everybody else. He was common. As a matter of fact, Judas, right, the guy who stabbed Jesus in the back, betrayed him. Judas had to identify who Jesus was because the Roman guards couldn't, they didn't know who he was. And so at that time, at that particular time, we look at this idea of being all powerful but having it all under control. Okay? Humility, you guys, is a choice. It is not a feeling. You can see people and they go, I'm humble, brother. I'm humble. They walk around, but that... They could be humble, but most of the time when people are walking around, I'm humble, I'm humble. I look at it and I wonder, I, go, I, I tell people, I go, man, that's goofy. See, you're goofy. The <laughs> guy's like, I'm humble. I go, that's goofy. Humility is a choice. It can attack its, uh, attract itself to your, uh, attach itself to your emotions, but humility is a choice. Okay? When you are going through life, you're going to have great success and you're going to have difficult times. When you're in great success, that's going to be the true test of your humility. Your humility is an understanding of who you are. Right? So when you guys are celebrating like you guys did the last two weeks, you have an understanding. When you guys walk onto the field with perfect health or walk onto the field intellectually, you can see, you can move, you can do things that not everybody is gifted with. That's a blessing from God. That's a blessing from God. When you and your friends have that camaraderie, right, the gift of friendship, and that when you guys leave the field and celebrate together, that's really, you guys, that's a gift from God. When you guys have a victory on the scoreboard, that, it's having the proper perspective of who I am. Because you know what? Not one of you, you not one of you can say it was because of me. Even though there's some great athletes on the team, not one of you. It's a team effort. All of you are working together, right, to make that happen. In the midst of success, I want you guys to think level-headed. Because what happens is, I'll use this MMA illustration with you guys, because I think that's the most relevant in today's day and age. How many times you see people, they come in, whoa, right? They control blow, they're brand new to the UFC, and they humble, right? They come, oh, thank you for the opportunity, game of life. This is going to be the next. And they just start knocking everybody out. They come in and just wipe it. I mean, they, they come in and just wipe people out. I have two really good friends, and Keone, Keone knows him because he grew up around him, but 
the night I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, I was at Kimo Leopoldo's house. Kimo in 1995, fought Royce Gracie. Remember Royce Gracie pulled his ponytail out, that whole thing. I was at Kimo's house the night I accepted Jesus Christ. He's a good friend of mine. We've done a lot of great things together. The second friend that I have who's in the MMA, I have a few friends, but the second really close friend is Vitor Belfort. Vitor, when he came on the scene, he was the young Fina. He would just come and just wipe everybody out. He would come and just, his hand speed was quicker than everybody else's, and he would find everybody in an island. And so when we were around Vitor and, and Kimo, I realized, here's these guys, and they come in, and the whole world, because I used to go down Waikiki, walk with Kimo, and the whole, I mean, all the Hawaiians would go nuts when they would see him. Oh, man, Kimo, thanks, yeah, bro, for wrecking all Hawaiians. I would watch that, you know, over time, this is what happened. Over time, you begin to believe it's you instead of Makua. You go, hey, man, I'm, I'm the one who made, I'm the one who made, and that's true, there's personal responsibility in that. But what you do is you begin to lose the, the, this perspective that he gave you everything that you have. He gave you your breath. Without the breath, you would just be a piece of dust on the ground. You'd be a corpse. Okay? He gave you everything that you have. And so I tell you guys, I watch these guys who come into MMA, start the UFC humble. They get a little self-confident, they get a little cocky, and guess what happens in the UFC when you get a little cocky? You get knocked out. <laughs> you get knocked out. Somebody will come and ring your bell, and you'll be knocked out. If you won't even know what happens at the end, they're over there, you know, the doctor's waking you up. So be careful, be careful that even in the midst of success, even sustained success that you remain humble, that you choose humility. You choose to say, hey, you know what? This is who I am. It's great. We celebrate all the great things together, but you guys choose to be humble. When you guys are going across the line, I've been watching you guys, how you guys relate to the other people that you guys just defeated, the other teams. And it was kind of, I was, I was near the field on Wong and all the jaw and off, remember they flagged the, the sidelines over. I, I was listening to all that because I was down on the field with you guys. And I thought, you know, in the midst of all of that, you guys, at the end, even though they mistreated, you know, they disrespected the JP and all that other stuff, I really enjoyed watching you guys choose humility. Because at the end of it, you guys just kind of, right, no, you guys weren't mouth it off, or you guys just kind of walked off, gave your respect to their coaches, their players. Choose humility. As God continues to bless you with great success, choose humility. Stay low, you guys. Stay low. Don't get all cocky and proud and think, yeah, yeah, man, but no, no, because if you guys stay humble, God will continue, continue to give you his blessings and his victories. Okay? The third warrior, okay, in closing, is an athletic warrior. He's one of the greatest athletic warriors that ever played the football game. Okay? And his name is Art Monk. I'm going to read you a little bit about Art Monk, but then I'm going to encourage you guys that sometime this week, go home. Look them up on YouTube, ESPN, watch the videos. It's going to blow your mind. This athletic warrior, a guy who chose humility, and when he chose humility, this is what happens. I'm going to read you a Bible verse. You guys going, when that guy going to bust out the Bible? I'm going to read you guys a Bible verse, okay? A short one. But here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, it says this. God sets himself against the proud, but shows favor to the humble. And because of that, he says, Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and in his good time, he will honor you. Okay? So here's the protocol. God sets himself against the proud. You know what that is. It says that God opposes the proud. Being proud is a choice. Proud is being independent of God, saying, Hey, I don't need you, God. Being independent from others. I don't need my team. No, we, we all need God, and we all need our team. God sets himself against, or he sets, he puts himself on the other line when you choose pride. But it says when you choose humility, he shows grace and favor. And that's what happens. That's what brings great success. That's what, that's what changes the scoreboard. That's what allows you guys to celebrate the way you do. And then beyond that, it says, because of this, humble yourselves. Choice, humble yourselves under the mighty power or the mana of God, and in His good time, He will honor you. And I'll share that, because I tell you guys this, at the end of it all, when Art Monk celebrated his career and all these successes, I read a little bit, it says, Monk was drafted in the first round of the 1980 NFL Draft by the Washington Redskins 
During his rookie year, he was unanimous all-rookie selection and had 15 receptions, which was a rookie record. Then he goes on to talk about, he says, during his 14 seasons with the Redskins, the team won three Super Bowl uh, rings. He was all pro and all NFC. But this is the cool thing, you guys. At the very end of it, at the very end of his career, I'm going to read you his stats. But I'm going to share, I'm going to share a brief moment that he had. I'm going to share a brief moment that he had at the end of his career. I think this is going to speak the most to you. It says that Monk finished his career with 940 receptions for 12,721 yards and 68 touchdowns, along with 332 rushing yards. He was the first NFL player, uh, NFL player in history to record over 100 receptions in a season and over 900 receptions in a career. His most no noteworthy NFL accomplishment was his record for his career receptions. Okay. Mark, uh, Monk became the league's all-time leading receiver on a Monday night game against Denver on October 12, 1992, with his 820th reception. Okay, so listen to this, you guys. It goes on to all these different athletes, but this is what it says. This is the end of his career. So if you guys, are, this is, has to do with business, this has to do with career development, this has to do with character and mindset, all of these things. When he was playing the same game he was playing, he was thinking about all of these things. He was trying to put things in his proper perspective. And at the end of it all, it says this. On August 2nd, 2008, Monk, along with fellow Washington Redskins teammate Daryl Green, was inducted into, into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now listen to this, guys. Upon his induction into the Hall of Fame, Monk received the longest standing ovation in Pro Football Hall of Fame history, lasting four minutes, and four seconds. And, and you guys can go watch it today. You guys can go watch it today. Go to YouTube, go to ESPN, watch it today. But when I watched it live, I thought, here are all these people. Here's one guy, born like you and I. But at the end of it, his destiny was greatness. Why? Because he chose humility all along the way. He chose what was pono all along the way. He chose to be a part of his team, as a matter of fact, their receivers was called the posse, right? And they did great things. If you look at all the things they accomplished together, the posse, right? Was, they did great things together. But at the end of it all, at the end of the, at the very end of it all, the result was this: when he walked into the Hall of Fame, four minutes and four seconds, the entire stadium gave an uproar of his character, of his integrity, and of his humility. And I said, if you guys are going to do something great in business, in athletics, and anything else, it's going to require those things. You think that, oh, I'm just, it's just another day, just another game. You guys think that your life will come to you just like that. If you think like he thought, he goes, man, I'm destined for greatness. I'm a warrior for a reason and a purpose. And I'm going to live my purpose. I'm going to live my destiny. And you two are going to be that honor that the Bible just talked about in 1 Peter 5, 5, that honor will come to you, your family, and for generations to come. I'll tell you this, his great-grandkids, his great-great-grandkids are always going to watch that time. Oh, you remember that time? Brock going inside there. And the whole stadium erupted for four minutes and four seconds and gave him honor. And so, I, again, you guys, I thank you for the privilege, Coach Baldwin. I, I love watching you guys. I know I've met some of you guys. I'm really proud of what, what you guys are doing together. I just see today, man. Today's another great day. It's your home game. Your home game, your attitude, your character, everything is going to determine what's going to happen the rest of the season. You guys, above everything else, if you guys want a clue to keep blessing your life, keep you guys injury free, keep those, right, keep all of those things going that's happening right now. Choose humility. Keep working really hard. Make formal decisions. You guys are Hawaiian, make formal decisions. You know what to do, you know what right is. Make formal decisions. Okay? I'm going to say a little blessing over your game, and I'm going to say a little blessing over you guys, and I'll close them there. Okay, let's borrow it. Akua, I thank you again for every single one of these warriors. I pray, Lord, I pray to the great God of the Hawaiians. And I ask God that you would anoint and empower every single one of these young men, Lord, today. That you would give them athletic skill, physical skill, Lord, that is unmatched. I pray that you would do that work in their heart and their spirit of humility and honor and respect. 
I pray, Lord, that today, Lord, they would remember what the most important thing is. And the most important thing, God, is that, Lord, even at the end of the day, God, that we express our gratitude to you for all the great blessings that you have blessed this team with. Thank you for the coaching staff. I pray that you would give them the wisdom, the guidance, Lord, the strength that they need, Lord, to take this team, Lord, this group of warriors, God, into that place, Lord, the destiny that you have for them. Again, Lord, we thank you for this school. We thank you for the privilege it is to be here. And I pray, Lord, that you would reveal yourself in unexplainable ways to every single one of these young men, and that you would reveal their destiny. And I pray this in the mighty name of the Yesu. Amen. Thanks, you guys.